So how well does ZBrush perform on the new MacBook Pro M1 Max? So this is the 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. It's the 32-core GPU version, and it has 64 gigabytes of memory and 4 terabytes of storage. I've been working with the M1 Max for about two months now. I picked it up at the Apple Store on launch day, and I've been using it exclusively ever since. And mainly because I wanted to focus on the M1 Max, so I haven't been sculpting on my Windows workstation. I've only been using the MacBook Pro. So the question is, how well does the M1 Max run ZBrush? But before we get to all that, I want to talk about laptops, because I think it's important. When I think of a laptop, I think of a machine that runs very hot, it runs on battery, but doesn't deliver the battery life that it promises, and it doesn't have the performance of a desktop computer. This has been my experience with laptops. Until now. The MacBook Pro M1 Max changes all of that. Forget everything you've ever thought about a laptop. The M1 Max is quiet, it has great battery life, and it has the performance of a desktop computer. It's as if Apple took a spaceship to another world and came back with alien technology. Because this is a laptop you've never seen before. This is a whole new experience for mobile computing. The M1 Max MacBook Pro is the ultimate laptop. So how does it compare as a desktop computer? Well, first let's talk about the competition. AMD and Intel both make higher core count desktop CPUs. And I would say the single core performance of the M1 Max is as good, if not better, than those CPUs. But let me be clear here. Having 32 cores or 64 cores on a Threadripper is still going to benefit you significantly when it comes to things like rendering. ZBrush is a real-time software-based renderer, and it is highly multi-threaded, so it can take advantage of high core count CPUs. Higher core count CPUs will allow you to work at higher resolutions and at higher frame rate. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean your clay buildup brush will run any better. That's dependent on single core performance. And the M1 Max has plenty of single core performance. So this is a fantastic machine to sculpt on. The higher end desktop CPUs with more cores will render better, give you better viewport rendering performance, but sculpting performance is as good on the M1 Max. It's a fantastic machine. So here's my Dragon Ball that I've used in previous performance reviews. This is 170 million polygons and it's made up of several subtools. And it runs quite well on the M1 Max, um, provided you have enough RAM in your system. The CPU is capable of rendering it and sculpting on it just fine. But there's a whole nother story here. So I invited a friend over. He's a ZBrush artist. He works in Windows on an AMD machine. So I open up the Dragon model on the M1 Max and I subdivide it even higher. I go to 250 million polygons across all the subtools combined and I start sculpting on it. Now keep in mind, this is on an external monitor at 4K resolution. This is very demanding for a system. I turn to my friend, I ask him, do you notice anything out of the ordinary? And he looked at me like, what are you talking about? Because everything looked normal. I said to him, listen, it's dead silent. You can't even hear the MacBook Pro M1 Max. Now I have two other computers in the room. And when they're idle, they're still louder than the M1 Max running ZBrush while I'm sculpting. You know, the M1 Max is really the quietest computer I have ever used. So let's talk about brush performance. Here we have a 27 million polygon object, and I'm using the clay buildup brush. And performance is very good here. This is much better than last year's M1 in the 2020 MacBook Pro. Here we see that performance is very much like a desktop computer. The M1 Max is just faster than the M1. It has more performance cores, and it has more RAM available to it. I don't recommend the 16 gigabyte model. I would say avoid that. Start with the 32 gigabyte model, and if you can swing it, get the 64 gigabyte, because that's going to be the ultimate performance. One more thing about memory you should keep in mind is that the CPU and GPU share the same system memory. Make sure you have enough RAM for both your applications and whatever you're loading into the GPU on the machine. So back to brush performance. Here I am using a clay buildup brush and a small brush size. Now performance degrades when you do this, and it has nothing to do with the M1 Max specifically. 
It's just the way the Clay Builder Brush works and how the default settings are set up. This will slow down on any machine. We can fix this by adjusting the lazy step value. If we decrease the value, you'll see what happens here. Performance becomes, well, unusable. If we increase the value, you're going to see performance come right back and you'll get that wonderful clay buildup brush performance and look. So again, this has nothing to do with the performance of the M1 Max. The M1 Max actually has the best single core performance of any CPU. And the brush functions in ZBrush depend on single core performance. So this is about as good as it gets. So what's up with the clay buildup brush? The clay buildup brush is a preset that is designed to optimize performance for medium to large brush sizes. And that's because it's a buildup brush. We're using it during the earlier stages of modeling to build up the foundational forms that we will later break down and refine into secondary and tertiary forms. So keep that in mind. If your clay buildup brush starts to perform a little slower, it's probably because you're using a small brush size and you can improve that performance by simply increasing the lazy step size. Now let's take a look at the move brush. So we're working with 27 million polygons here. And anytime you're going to be moving a large number of vertices, that's going to be a good indicator of performance. So with a small to medium size move brush radius, um, as you can see, performance is very good here. Now let's increase the radius of the move brush even more. And we can see performance is still very good. So we're moving a lot of vertices here and getting good feedback. We're getting a good number of frames per second. And uh, again, we're working at 4K. This is a 27 million polygon object. And we're getting very good performance here. So now let's increase the radius of the move brush even more. And you're going to see performance degrade here. Now let's step down to the first subdiv level. And we're going to use the move brush. And of course, it's going to run fast because we're not moving a lot of vertices. but just to demonstrate the performance here, it's very fast. So if you're sculpting morph targets or any kind of lower level shape changes, you're going to have excellent performance on the M1 Max. Now let's take a look at layer performance. We are still using a 27 million polygon object, but we are at level three. And this is about 450,000 polygons. And you can see the layers transition very well. I could go up to 27 million polygons and adjust the layers, but the performance is very slow up there. Um, anytime you morph that many vertices, it's just going to be slow. It's like taking the move brush with a very large radius and moving a lot of vertices at once. It's just going to get slow. So um, you can do it, but uh, if you're looking to do facial animation, you kind of want to see the feedback. You want to see the, the transitions from pose to pose as skin compresses and pulls and stretches and bulges and all that stuff. So uh, this is good performance, I would say. So here we are testing viewport rendering performance. And we can look at the eight performance cores on the uh, activity monitor and see that they are doing plenty of work here. They're maxing out at 100%. And the efficiency cores also help to render the viewport. Now, they aren't at 100%, but they're close to it. And uh, performance is very good here. I mean, it's not as comparable to a 32-core Threadripper. Um, and even though those are slower cores, 32 cores is still going to be faster when rendering. Um, but the M1 Max does a great job here. And the interesting thing is I run a BPR here. And if you look at the efficiency cores, they kind of drop out during the BPR process. I don't know why that is. It's kind of interesting. Um, but again, this is 4K. Rendering is very good. Uh, the amazing thing is it's dead silent while rendering. Uh, my Threadripper cannot do that. My Threadripper is loud as hell. And this thing is dead silent while you're working on it. It's alien technology. It's fascinating. So here's another rendering performance test. It's 27 million polygons. There's no subdiv levels. This is just straight polygon. And uh, as you can see here, when I turn on frame, you can see all the individual polygons. And that's usually a little bit of an extra overhead for the rendering in ZBrush. So here I'm sculpting, and performance is very good, right? So look at the cores on the activity monitor. They're having no problem doing this. Uh, undo performance is very quick. Take a look at the activity monitor. Let's look at Core 3 while I sculpt on the model. Core 3 is going to be doing most of the work, and that's because the brush functions, the sculpting functions, run on a single core. And we want that core to run as fast as possible. So we generally look for CPUs that have fast single core performance. And the M1 Max just happens to be 
the fastest single core performing CPU on the market. doesn't matter if it's a desktop or a laptop. There's nothing that compares to its single core performance. Um, there are CPUs with more cores, but they have slower core performance. So the M1 Max is excellent for sculpting in ZBrush. And here's another shining example of my modeling skills. <laughs> now, I've smashed the hell out of this with Sculptress, and obviously we're going to talk about Sculptress performance. So when we look at the graph, we can see that Sculptress is another function in ZBrush that really relies on that single core performance. And the M1 Max has the fastest single core performance of any CPU, and that includes high-end desktop CPUs. Now, I know this model isn't much to look at, but the thing to take away from this is the M1 Max has excellent sculpting performance. And there are CPUs with higher core counts, but their cores aren't as fast as the cores in the M1 Max. So um, this is a fast machine. It's quiet and powerful. So uh, let's move on to the next. Now let's take a look at Z Remesher and Project All, two functions I often use together. I'm sure you're familiar with them. So let's hit Z Remesher, and as you can see, it's very fast. It's not using all the cores, it just used the core three. And now let's subdivide our model up to 681,000 polygons. And we're going to project the 27 million polygon object onto it. And you're gonna see that this is very fast. And if you look at the graphs, something interesting happens here. Now the performance cores are contributing 100% of the workload. Um, but the efficiency cores did not. They did not go up to 100% utilization. So the efficiency cores, for some reason, don't contribute as much to the projection function. Um, and I'm going to subdivide them all to 10 million polygons, and we're going to reproject that 27 million polygons onto it. And you're going to see something even more interesting. So once again, the performance cores all go up to 100% utilization. And the efficiency cores, now they go up even higher than the last projection. So they're now contributing more to the projection than they were in the last projection process that we just ran. And I don't know how to explain that. Still, the projectile is using pretty much the entire M1 Max in terms of all the performance that it can give. And this is where the AMD 32-core Threadripper or 64-core Threadripper would have a significant advantage. Any highly multi-threaded process like rendering or project all, uh, it's just gonna run better when you have more cores. So in the interest of time, I've skipped ahead a little bit. The projection is now finishing at two minutes and 22 seconds. So let's move on to the next segment. So here we're gonna unwrap a 10,000 polygon object. This is pretty common and it's very quick. Um, now we didn't see how it performed on the core, so I'm going to unwrap a 170,000 polygon object just so you can see the performance on the cores. And we click unwrap and you can see on the graph that most of the cores aren't helping here. It's just the single core performance doing the unwrap process. And um, it'll take a little bit of time to finish, but it's not terrible. It's 170,000 polygons. Normally you don't unwrap that much, but uh, if you need to, and in some cases you might need to, um, it's fairly quick. So it should be done right about now. And we'll check the result. And now let's take a look at key shot performance. So it takes a bit of time to export my 170 million polygon model from ZBrush to KeyShot. So I edit that part out of the video. And once it gets in there, it renders fairly quickly. It uses all the cores, even the efficiency cores. Now KeyShot is using the M1 Max to its fullest. So the fans on the MacBook Pro did turn on. It's noticeable, but only because the MacBook Pro is so quiet normally. It's still fairly quiet even with the fan on. It's quieter than a desktop computer, and it was cool to the touch. So KeyShot is pushing the M1 Max to its fullest, and it's not going to get much faster unless they add more cores to the CPU. Now, it's worth noting that KeyShot currently does not have any support for GPU accelerated rendering on the M1 Max. So we'll see what KeyShot does in the future, but keep that in mind that the GPU cores currently don't do anything for KeyShot. And one more quick thing. This is the camera scene that comes with KeyShot. It's a simpler scene, so I figured I would include it. Uh, my dragon model is obviously way more complex in terms of polygon count. So anywhere between this scene and my dragon scene, you can expect that kind of performance on the M1 Max. So I'm going to bring this all to a close here by saying, yeah, ZBrush can run very well on the M1 Max. And if you're thinking about buying one, I highly recommend it. Um, if you have one on order, you're going to love it when it arrives. You know, I really 
am serious when I say this feels like alien technology. It doesn't feel like any other laptop that has come before it. It just runs so cool and quiet at the same time. It's really wild. You just don't see that in laptops. You know, this is really something different. And uh, I should mention the screen. The screen is really nice. It's a 4K uh, HDR screen. It has 120 hertz refresh rate, so you get a very high frame rate. And it has a local dimming array, so you get really good localized contrast. Very deep blacks, very bright whites, excellent HDR imagery. Um, also, the speakers. The speakers are the last thing anyone mentions about the laptop because there's so many good things going for this MacBook, but the speakers are phenomenal. Uh, they are shockingly good for a laptop. And, uh, yeah, when you hear them, you'll be surprised. Uh, anyway, that's the 2021 MacBook Pro M1 Max. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.